This is me, after intentionally starting a fire in my wood shop. Now, before you call me an idiot and say, why the heck are you starting fires in your own wood shop? Well, let me explain. Here's some security camera footage from my friend Lucas's shop. He runs Lighthouse Boston in Boston, and this video was taken just after midnight. That's a plastic bag full of linseed oil-soaked rags spontaneously combusting. Yeah, just after midnight. Nobody was there, and the flames get bigger and bigger. Fortunately, somebody happened to just be stopping by the shop randomly and walked in to find the fire before it got too big and ruined his day. But this was the first time I had ever actually seen footage of rags spontaneously combusting. Now, I'd always heard that oil-soaked rags could spontaneously combust, but I always thought that it just wasn't that likely. Sure, I take the proper precautions. I always spread my rags out on the floor and let them completely dry before I put them in the garbage can because I don't want to start a fire. But until I saw that security camera footage, I just didn't realize it could happen that easily. And that started me thinking, how easy can it happen? So I decided to conduct a little experiment. We're gonna try three different types of linseed-based oil. Because looking online, linseed oil, although not the only type of oil that can cause spontaneous combustion, it's the most common. So we're gonna use raw linseed oil, boiled linseed oil, and then we're gonna use Rubio Monocote, my personal favorite finish in the wood shop, because, well, it's got a lot of linseed oil in it. We're gonna conduct some various experiments in different situations and, well, we're gonna see if I can set my shop on fire. Here's how we did it. Now, I wanted to test this out in multiple different scenarios that would be commonplace in any average person's wood shop. So the first thing I did was clear out a nice open space on my wood shop floor. Then using white duct tape, I created a grid three by six, so I'll have 18 individual squares. Each square will represent a different test. Each of the three columns will have a different type of oil, and each of the six rows will have a different scenario that you might find oily rags in someone's wood shop. As I mentioned at the start of this video, after doing some research, linseed oil is the most common culprit for spontaneous combustions. So we're gonna test it three ways, boiled linseed oil, raw linseed oil, and Rubio Monocote which is my favorite finish and the thing I use most common in the wood shop. It also has a heck of a lot of linseed oil in it. Each row will be as identical as we can make it. The only difference will be the type of oil that we use. For our first row, we went simple, just rags in a ball on the ground. So I took the three different types of oil, I took a bunch of rags, and we piled them up on the ground. Now, I tried to do this in a way similar to how the rags would look after I used them to wipe finish onto a piece of furniture. So some rags were really soaked, some rags were kind of soaked, and then I threw some rags in there that just didn't have any oil on them. It was a good mixture. For our next row, we're basically going to do the exact same thing, but this time we're going to put it in a black garbage bag. This is the scenario that the rags caught fire in Lucas's shop, so we're going to try and recreate that to the best of our ability. He said the rags were in the bag, but the bag was not tied shut. It was just slightly closed. So I put rags in the bag, soaked them with the individual types of oil, and I just barely closed each bag. Hopefully we're recreating somewhat of a similar situation to his fire. The third row is a garbage can. Now this is the most common garbage can used in shops across America. And for this scenario, we're gonna put a lid on top. Inside is just oil soaked rags. In the fourth row, it's the exact same thing, but this time, no lid. In the fifth row, I tried to recreate a more accurate representation of a garbage can in an actual working wood shop. So I put in various wood scraps of different sizes, and then I don't know about you, but I always have a woodworking catalog or two thrown in my garbage can. We get tons of them in the mail and they seem to be looked at for a while and then thrown away. So I ripped up a Rockler catalog, sorry Rockler, and I put a few pages in each can. Then of course a couple hands of sawdust to really make it an accurate depiction of what my garbage can would look like, and we're on to the last row. This time I did something different, cloth soaked rags. Up until this point, I was using disposable cotton rags, which is what I use in my shop, but I know some people like cloth rags. So I switched to cloth rags for the last row, and again, I'm just using oil and rags in a garbage can. Who knows what's gonna happen? 
And then just for fun, I bought one of these fire safe rag containers. This is what you're supposed to put rags in. So we're gonna just put a bunch of rags in here, a few disposable, a few cloth rags, and a couple different types of oil. We're gonna make an oily rag soup, close the lid, and see what happens. If this catches on fire, then, well, we're really in trouble. During the course of the entire experiment, I will have two cameras constantly on our test subjects. This one from up above showing each individual square, and I'll have this side view. Again, I will not turn these cameras off during the course of the entire experiment. So if there's a spontaneous combustion, we should catch it on camera. I'm also going to be monitoring the temperatures of each individual test as we go. I'm going to set a timer on my phone for every hour, and I'm going to take each temperature using this infrared thermometer gun. After I take each temperature, I will mark it down onto one of these sheets. I'll get a new sheet every hour so I can monitor the progression of the temperature as we go along. The base temperature for each test was around 55 degrees because it was pretty cold in my shop when we first started. Now that I had everything worked out, all my rags soaked in oil in their various different situations, the only thing left to do was to sit around and wait for something to catch fire. Now I understand. This could take a long, long time. Hours. Luckily, I had my tin whistle out there, so that helped me pass time for a little bit. When I got tired of the tin whistle, I switched to the harmonica. Pretty soon, time had just flown by, and it had already been, well, it had only been one hour. But at least it was time to take temperatures. So I got my infrared heat gun and I started documenting the temperature of each individual test. And you know, something kind of crazy happened. After reading all the temperatures, they actually went down. We are headed in the wrong direction. But then I realized I don't have any heat on in my shop, which isn't exactly accurate. So I turned my heater on to 64 degrees, which is what I usually keep my shop at. And then it was back to waiting. Luckily, Ivor came out to keep me company. He also brought a video game, and no, he didn't let me play, so that was no fun. After two hours, I went around and took the temperatures again. Then at three hours, again. This time, Ivor was in control of the gun, although he thought it was an actual laser gun. At four hours, temperatures started to go up, but they were still hovering right around the actual temperature in my shop. My wife brought me a uh, dinner. Hamburger gravy and mashed potatoes with broccoli. Ivor's uh, monitoring the temperatures, making sure that nothing catches on fire while I eat dinner. Then all of a sudden, just after five hours, something happened. All right. You guys, I gotta tell you, to be completely honest, I was starting to get to the point where I thought for sure nothing was gonna happen with any of these. And then I started to smell something before anything else. I came over, I started taking temperatures, and this bag here, which is the boiled linseed oil, inside the bag, obviously, it is reading at 98 degrees, which is pretty crazy, because it's not 98 degrees in here. I can feel the heat coming off of it with my hand. It's not smoking yet, but it is definitely warming up. And then as I started taking temperatures of everything else, this one back here, which is the boiled linseed oil in the garbage can with the wood and sawdust and magazine and all that other stuff, it is reading at 84 degrees. So those both are heating up, which is funny because just the rags in the garbage can is not, the cloth rags is not, and the one with the lid isn't. And obviously the rags just sitting on the ground aren't heated up. So it's just these two, which is funny. So I'm gonna keep an eye on it. Nothing seems dangerous at this point. Nothing has burst into flames. I'm definitely gonna be a little more vigilant at this point. I got the fire extinguishers over there. I have a bucket of water just in case. And of course, I can just grab one of these and haul it outside real fast if I need to. So, kind of crazy. Keep you posted, see what happens. 
All right, so I've been taking temperatures every hour on the hour and pretty much everything has been hovering right around 57 to 62 degrees. Um, I think there's some variance in there because I got the heat pump going and it turns on and off so it goes up and down a few degrees, but for the most part between 57, 62. We're right at six hours into this and this bag, which was 98 degrees, is now up to 127. So it's going up. This bag is getting warm, 127 degrees on this one. And the other one back here, it is at 99 degrees. So this one is going up too. I'm going to go around and take measurements on all the other ones. Those are the only two that I know are heating up, but I haven't done the other ones since I last checked. So I'm going to take the other measurements and we'll see where we're at. Oh, ho, ho, ho. okay. So this is the Rubio Monocoat in the garbage can with the wood and sawdust and all that. And now it is up to 87 degrees. So we got a lot going on here all at once. Interesting. Now, although temperatures were going up, I had no delusions about these things actually catching on fire. I mean, rags are pretty similar to paper, and paper doesn't catch fire until it's over 400 degrees. And we still had a long, long ways to go before we got there. But then, just over six hours into our experiment, this happened. This is a real-time look at our experiment, and without warning, flames. You'll notice that right before the flames, I was nowhere near any of the garbage cans. I was actually across the shop. But all of a sudden, almost like magic, and true to its name, spontaneous combustion occurred. Crazy. You guys, we have a fire. <laughs> oh, what? This is not what I would have guessed. This is the Rubio Monocoat, and that was the one that was a lesser temperature just, I don't know, 25, 30 minutes ago. I can't talk much because I got to get this thing out of here. What flames? Holy cow. All right, I got to take this outside. Ah! I don't want to stay out here too long because my other buckets could catch in fire. That was the first time I've ever used a fire extinguisher in my entire life. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe that actually caught on fire. <laughs> that is crazy, and at the same time, absolutely terrifying. Holy cow. All right, well, we're not done yet. I wanna see if those other ones catch on fire too. I'm gonna to leave this one outside. It's in the middle of my big paved area, so if it starts up again, should be okay. I'll keep coming and checking on it. I don't wanna stay outside too long because obviously I have other things that could start my shop on fire. So let's go back inside. Okay, I'm back inside so I can keep an eye on these things. The thing that really just shocks me is that 25, 30 minutes ago, I gotta look at the clock. I took all those temperatures and that was the coolest one. I wanna say it was at like, it was under 90 degrees. So I'm really curious now, I'm gonna go take the temperatures of the other ones, but how that one all of a sudden 
got hot enough to burst into flames. Something happened in there, chemical reaction, and it caught fire before the other ones. If I had to put money on one, it would have been the boiled linseed oil that was the hottest. It was at 127 degrees. What happened? This is crazy. And absolute proof that you should not put rags in a garbage can. That took less than seven hours to catch on fire. All right, so I went and looked at the clock and it had been exactly 29 minutes since I took the temperatures. So we were at six hours, 29 minutes. When I took the temperatures, this was at 127 and the other boiled linseed oil was at 99, I forget, sorry. I'll have to look at my sheet. Anyways, these are both higher than the Rubio Monocoat. So in 29 minutes, that went all the way up high enough to catch on fire, which is crazy. This in 29 minutes is only at 132. So it's only gone up five degrees. And this is just over a hundred. It's at 105. So these are both going up. Based on that one, I would assume at any time, these are just gonna go crazy and catch on fire. The rest of them, still right around room temperature, so nothing's going on. So, we're gonna wait, and we're gonna see what happens. Bourbon moth, if you want to poop, bourbon moth first. Nope, sorry, occupado. Dude, I'm gonna regret this, but what the heck. I'm trying to get people to learn about my business, so I strap myself to this porta potty because nobody poops until they hear what I have to say about my business. Why don't you just make a website? Then everybody can go online, they can find you, and you don't have to, you know, do this. I'm strapped to an outhouse. Does it look like I know how to make a website? How hard is it to add products to the website? And Squarespace is really easy because you can add as many products as you want. There's no limitations and people can just go right on there and purchase. Huh? I really don't like shipping. So is there a way that people could maybe just come pick stuff up so I don't even have to worry about shipping it? If you really hate shipping, that's fine because they offer local pickups. So you can just have people come directly to you, pick things up, and you don't even have to worry about it. Oh, okay, but... I do a lot of videos. What if I want to do videos? Is there any way to do them right there on the website? Yeah, through their video editing studio, you can do all your video editing and everything right there on the website. So you can create professional quality videos, post them to your website. It's easy. And again, you don't have to do this. So you're saying I don't need to be strapped to this outhouse. Listen, man. If you go to squarespace.com slash bourbon moth woodworking and sign up, you'll get 10% off your purchase of your first website or domain. So wait, you're telling me that if I want to build my own website, all I got to do is go to squarespace.com and sign up. And then when I'm ready to launch, all I got to do is go to squarespace.com slash bourbon moth woodworking and I'll save 10% off my first website or domain. That's a pretty good deal. Let's do it. So I'm gonna assume this isn't available and I'll find someplace else to do my thing. Okay, it has been seven hours now. No more fires since the last one. So it's been almost half an hour since the last fire. No more fires. This bag right here is up to 185 degrees. 112, so this one's still going up too. And the interesting thing, this one is now at 84 degrees. So this one is going up too, because it's only about 64 degrees in my shop. 84.3 on this one. And the really interesting thing is none of the other Rubio ones are warm at all. It was just that one in the back. So after the excitement of our first fire, unfortunately it was back to sitting around and waiting for something else to happen. All right, this just in. I'm monitoring them pretty close right now. I still have my timer set for every hour, but every once in a while I'm just walking around and testing them. 
This one, which has been at room temperature the entire time, this is just raw linseed oil in the garbage can with the sawdust and wood chips and everything else. And right now, it is 108, 100.6, sorry. Look at that. So, this one's heating up, which is crazy. It's the first one in the raw linseed. So now we've had one at least in every column, three in this one, one in this, and then obviously the one that caught on fire that are having some sort of reaction. Whether or not they're gonna catch on fire, I don't know, but it's warming up, so that's crazy. I waited around for almost an hour after that, and then all of a sudden, almost eight hours into our experiment, we had another fire. This time in the garbage bag with the boiled linseed oil covered rags. This scenario is very similar to what happened in Lucas's shop. So of all the different tests, this one was the least surprising. Okay, we've got fire. This one <laughs> in the garbage bag. I'm gonna try and grab this to carry outside. I just don't know if it's gonna work. Nope, that's not gonna work. Get in the fire extinguisher. Ow, pull the pin, idiot. I'd be a horrible firefighter. Oh, melted plastic. Horrible for my lungs, I'm sure. I don't want to spray it way down because I'm trying not to contaminate the other uh, tests. Because obviously, if I get fire extinguisher powder in the other things, it's not going <coughs> to be very accurate. There's so much smoke in my shop. But don't worry, <coughs> my shop's not going to burn down. <coughs> I'm going to try and carry this outside. Okay, I don't know if you can see the smoke that's everywhere in my shop, but no more fire, so that's good. Oh, all right, I'm getting a little concerned now that, like, what if multiple go off at once? I, I mean, I guess I just stop trying to protect the experiment and I douse the entire thing. Luckily, the fire extinguisher seems to be working just fine. I was a little worried that because it's like a chemical reaction, maybe a normal fire extinguisher wouldn't work. So I'm very happy to see that it does. That's good to know. Your standard household fire extinguisher works great to put out oily rag fires. Um, we're just going to keep going. So now we have one from the Rubio and one from the boiled linseed. I have to say, I was really hoping that I could get a fire. I'm honestly shocked that we managed to get two spontaneous combustions. That one was just under eight hours. So that shows you how long it takes, which is really scary because if you think about it, if you put rags in your garbage can in your shop at one o'clock in the afternoon, well, you might not leave until five or six. You think everything's fine and then eight or nine o'clock at night when you're not there, boom, garbage can lights on fire. Don't put rags in your garbage can. Man, I burnt my finger a little bit trying to pick up that bag earlier, but all in the name of science. I'm going to open a door or two and turn on the fan, see if I can get some of this smoke out of here. Interesting things, this one right here, which is just the raw linseed oil um, in the garbage can with the sawdust and wood chips and all that, it is up to 200 degrees. That first Rubio one went from 90 to flames in half an hour, so anything could happen here. But I'm sure at some point, the rags are gonna be dried out and we'll be out of the danger zone. 
I guess. It had been over two hours since our last fire. I was getting pretty tired, and at this point, even though temperatures were still starting to rise a little bit, I was kind of starting to feel like nothing else was going to happen. And then at almost 11 hours, another can caught fire. This time, it was the boiled linseed oil in just the garbage can. I'm not proud of this, but when this one caught fire, I was right in the middle of an episode of Seinfeld. So I wasn't paying too close of attention. Luckily, once the flames got a little bigger, it was pretty hard not to notice. What? <laughs> okay. Um, we have another fire. I'm gonna get this out of here before it, oh boy, gets too crazy. <laughs> oh. Getting quite the collection out here. I left the fire extinguisher inside though. I'll be back. Wow. Just when I was about ready to call it quits, it has been almost 11 hours and this thing just wasn't going up in temperature. It was staying right around like 125 degrees. And then all of a sudden, poof. That is just crazy. I'm blown away. I thought for sure that we weren't gonna have any more because it just wasn't heating up, but Look at that. I would not want that happening in my shop when I'm sleeping. Ah! Oh. All right, that one kind of scared me. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I got a little lazy in watching these because the temperatures weren't doing anything spectacular. And I was watching a TV show. I mean, I was out here, I was 15 feet away, but I was watching a TV show on my iPad and I smelled it before I saw it, and there were flames. So it just shows you, man, that happens so quick. So I really gotta focus up. It's late though, it's like 11.30 at night at this point. I've been out here all day staring at these. I'm getting tired. So I think the smartest thing to do at this point, um, just for safety reasons, is give it another hour. I'll be really focused, and I'm gonna I'll give it an hour and a half. One o'clock in the morning, if nothing else has happened, I'm gonna move everything outside, douse it with water, and that will have been 12 plus hours at that point, so I think that's a pretty good run. I'm still blown away by the results of this. It's just crazy to me. It wasn't until one o'clock in the morning that temperature readings started to go down instead of up which I was very happy about because I was exhausted at this point. Oh, well, it has been over 12 hours now. It is just past one o'clock in the morning. And this is the first time that I've read all the temperatures and they are either what they've been the entire time or they have decreased. Pretty insane results. We had three different scenarios catch fire. And uh, tomorrow I'm gonna kinda go through all the data, tally it up, and see where we're at. Also, in case you were wondering, in the course of this, this has not increased in temperature at all. So, our fire safe rag container has done its job, as far as I can tell. You guys, <laughs> this is crazy. So I'm taking those garbage cans outside to put them in a safe spot. And I walked out and what did I find out here? But our experiment from before reignited. I'm not sure because I wasn't watching, my fault. Um, I'm not sure which one ignited again. This one right here, 
was the boiled linseed oil in the garbage bag. And then this one was the last one to ignite, which I think was just the boiled linseed oil, just the rags in the garbage can, which unfortunately now has melted all over my driveway. Before I went to bed, I put all the cans outside and I doused them with water. The next morning there had been no new fires. So I think the experiment was complete. Well, the results speak for themselves. I am absolutely blown away and terrified that spontaneous combustion can happen that easily. I was shocked that we were able not only to get one fire started through spontaneous combustion, but three different fires started. And not only that, out of the 18 tests we ran, nine of them increased in temperature over a 12 and a half hour period, which means they could have just as easily caught fire. The scary thing is that all three of the fires that did start were in different situations and scenarios, which means that you just don't know where or when this might happen. Bottom line, and the thing I think we've learned above all else, do not take the chance with oily rags. Don't shove them in your garbage can and leave them unattended. Lay them out, let them dry completely before throwing them away. The last thing I want for me or anybody watching is for their shop to burn down. What a horrible mess, and it's something I think can be easily prevented. So hopefully you learned something in that. Check the video description down there for links to our Patreon page, website, new merchandise, all that stuff. But most importantly, stay safe out there.